Hello and welcome to another edition of PCHEM Lab Screencast. I'm Jeff Yarger and today I'm going to give you a couple examples of um, PCHEM Lab reports. Uh, one example from uh, a student report where I've removed the name and stuff and then a couple journal articles. I just want to say a few things that will hopefully help you when you're writing your own report for Physical Chemistry Laboratory in Chemistry 343 at Arizona State University. So this is a report from uh, several years ago. Experiment number one was um, a diffusion experiment using NMR. So uh, pulse field gradient spin echo NMR used to determine the diffusion coefficient of a liquid. They had a title, they put their name, first name, last name, they had an uh, email address and even a phone number and like I said basically for contact information. They stated what the objective of the uh, lab was, uh, the programs they used, that they were given data, and they stated their uh, numerical results with associated error. So this was all fairly good. Um, the introduction uh, started with what self-diffusion is. Uh, it went on to the equations to uh, that describe that as well as the viscosity, how it's associated with it, and uh, some basics about NMR. The one thing I would say here is, is that they have very minimal referencing. They give about three or four references, but they quickly summarize, you know, what NMR was and the diffusion and some references they use to understand it. Um, and then uh, the equation, uh, you know, re-manipulated that they used and the pulse sequence in NMR. And again, with some associ associated references. And the, the figure here, uh, I'll say a few things. A couple of their fonts is a little too small to read, uh, but the figure caption is given, and uh, again, they could have given a little more detail in their figure caption, but um, but overall, uh, they provided. Didn't they? They start in with uh, the um, you know an introduction to you know Kaleidograph and and some of the software, which really isn't necessary, could be put in the experimental section. In their experimental section, you can see a that. Overall, their two-column formatting is a little off compared to what a real journal article would be, but um, and and so are some of their headings. Um, but they provide, you know, where they got the data from, uh, what what the data is, what the sample is, uh, kaleidograph. Even though they don't give, I don't think the version number, which they probably should. Uh, some of the background data that they were given, um, and uh, some of the equation data they were given. So. Uh, for this one, uh, they didn't measure it themselves, or they should have given more about the instrumentation and the parameters used to set it up. Again, a little off on formatting and uh, a little too large of a font, and they should have made each column a little wider as far as getting a little smaller font with a little more data on there. And then we'll start in with the results in the discussion. You know, they show an example of uh, some of the data. They don't show it all. They just show the gradient at 2, 42, and 95. That's fine. It's representative data. There's no reason to clutter up a graph. It's uh, with all the data when you can just show a subset that representatively shows what you want. There's no reason for a title on um, a figure in a um, you know, a report. Uh, their font is readable, but for example, their x-axis could be a little larger. Um, why this isn't centered, why they have grid marks on here, I don't know why this is off of the chart and not included in the chart, or why this data just isn't talked about uh, in the figure caption, I don't know. Um, but those are all things that they got counted slightly off for their figure caption, which says the NMR, it starts the NMR spectrum of acetone. This is very vague. It's, it, you need to be more detailed. It's the proton NMR spectrum of acetone. It should probably say the field strength at which it was collected. Um, you know, you don't need to state that it was plotted between, you know, 2.1 and 2.0 ppm. That's obvious from just looking at the plot itself. Um, you know, and you don't need to make conclusions here. You just need to state what the figure represents. Uh, moving on to some other figures, you know, then they show chloroform. It has the same problems with having a title, having the legend outside of the plot, not having the legend information in the figure caption, uh, etc. But uh, they did a good job at least of just showing some representative data and they didn't give a very detailed figure caption here. Um, <clears throat> when they calibrated their gradient, it's hard to tell where the data points are on this plot and what the fit to the data points are. And that's a big problem. Again, they have the legend outside and, and um, a, a title, which they don't need. Um, your actual data 
uh, typically is given as data points and then the uh, the line the linear fit is given as a line um, however when you're showing NMR data like over here it is pretty common not to use uh, symbols for the data points just because it's so many um, and then let's get down again to another figure uh, besides the obvious that it has demos they didn't you know they could have scaled to ln of s0 so that the plots all normalized to start at the same place um, you can tell like their font is a little too small here to read uh, they could have used real formatting superscripts and stuff here they don't need a title I don't know you know why it says demo copy um, <clears throat> you know they need to talk about you know what their fits are they could have given the equations for the line and stuff in the figure caption instead of in the legend etc so there's a few problems that I see when I look at this they they show what their noise is this is to help them with error and, and I don't mind this at all it, it gives a good uh, estimation of what the noise is and I don't mind them showing this plot it's not necessary but it, it's definitely nice and then they plot out what some of their errors are that's fine you can see they have a clear formatting issue here you don't know where the data point what the data points are versus the linear fit they give the linear fit values as these huge legends when they should just put it in the figure caption um, etc <clears throat> and then they provide some references uh, they did do a better job here at the supplemental even though I would say usually a supplemental should start with the paragraph stating what the calculations are that you're showing or the error analysis etc in other words to actually give some description of what what's going on but they do the partial differentials uh, partial derivatives of everything to calculate um, you know all their perturbation you know propagation of error in this report so that's a quick summary I gave you several example articles um, to go through I'm not going to go through them all I'm, I'm just going to potentially go through a couple here just to show you how they do a, a bit better of a job when it comes to things obviously you'll have a title and again you'll have authors uh, with it not really an address as much as an email address they're um, you know they immediately state that they're measuring self diffusion coefficients of what materials they state what those values are however they don't give errors associated with it we will always have errors associated with ours the emphasis in this research paper isn't on um, the error but they give basically a you know numerical values for what they conclude their um, you know introduction you know introduces a lot of topics gives lots of references here seven through ten you know reference you know they basically uh, you know through their experimental you know have you know over 13 references to the background material they show what molecule they're using as a structural uh, figure which is nice again they're very detailed in their you know what their sample is how they do pulse field gradient NMR what instruments they use they give a lot of detail in the instrumentation as well as when they start the results in the discussion they give a detail of uh, some of the equations the diffusion equation um, etc for what they did to, um, to fit some of this uh, data when they give their plots again you can see their experimental data here there's no um, you know they you can clearly see their fonts you can see their x-axis it's nice formatting it's easy to understand and they give a nice um, figure caption that says that this is the experimental data and this is the the fit the exponential fit to that data which is nice um, and then they they have subheadings within the results and discussion which talk about each part again like when they do include a, a legend it's within the figure itself you can see all the data you can clearly read their things they're all within formatted within their link and they give detailed figure captions uh, for each of these and you can see that you the figures all format nicely and you, you get a lot of text in this double column where they discuss some of these results you can have tables that cross the entire both columns and they give a, a table numerically of a lot of their results um, along with you know a detailed conclusion and you know references to all their work including you know um, some of the NMR etc okay we'll just look at one more briefly just uh, as another example and then let you guys go on this again they're, they're giving their numerical values for what they find for things they're telling you it's proton NMR that they're, they're looking at uh, diffusion coefficients etc um, they go through you know a detail of both uh, the experiment uh, what's been done in other things how pulse field gradient spin echo works and you know they have over 24 references here to background material they're very detailed in the experimental section 
on both the um, samples they used as well as the measurements they made. They have a separate subheading for the measurements here. And they even in there, they include the equations in their experimental. So instead of in the results in the discussion, they put it here, which is fine. They give uh, you know equations to everything they're doing, including how to get from viscosity to diffusion. In other words, the Stokes-Einstein equation, etc. cetera. Um, so a very detailed uh, um, experimental section that I really uh, think is a, is a good model. And then they have subheadings for their results in discussion where they talk about each part. Now let's look at some of their plots. Again, very nice NMR plots where you can clearly read their x-axis and it, they could stack it in a way that you can clearly see the decay as you increase the gradient strength and they even show the molecule. I think this is a really nice figure that shows how you can summarize a whole lot of data all in a very short amount of space which should be one of your goals for uh, making figures in PCHEM lab and again very detailed figure captions that uh, describe what's going on. Again here they normalize the signal to the signal at zero intensity so they can show a whole range of data all on one plot uh, you know uh, so that you can quickly see what's going on. This is a very nice way to plot your data where in a sense the slope is directly related to the diffusion coefficient um, directly instead of just plotting it as a function of g squared they plot it as a function of all the constants as well so that the slope directly gives the diffusion coefficient. Nice way to do it, a nice way to summarize all their data when they show NMR figures again they summarize a lot of data with molecules all at once very nicely um, done. I think this is a very good example of how to make nice figures, how to incorporate it into a report, how to reference things properly, uh, etc. And then I recommend you look at some of their supplemental sections to show some of their details. I hope this helps give you a, a bit more information on when you're writing your first report. Uh, good luck and I'll catch you at a screencast again soon.